Hello, I'm Vincent, and this is a tutorial on how you can use HyperNav to set up 3D navigation in Unity. So, HyperNav is an asset on the Unity Asset Store that you can download as you would any other asset. However, you do need to be aware that you need to install the infohazard.core library as well. That's also by me, and it's completely free, so um, there's no extra charge there. You just need to make sure you install this thing as well, or it will not work. So in Unity, I have this demo scene where I'm going to get stuff set up. I have a bunch of geometry, um, just all these cubes with colliders and meshes on them, and also an agent. This is the character that's going to be navigating around the level and flying around, of course, rather than walking. And he has just a collider and a mesh right now, no special logic set up yet. So let's get navigation set up in this level. The first thing I need to do to get HyperNav working is to create a volume. I'm going to go InfoHazard, uh, Create, HyperNav, Nav Volume. See, this new object is created here. And this volume is basically the space in which navigation can occur. So I need to get this volume set up to enclose my playable area here. I'm just going to drag the bounds out like this, and you can do this by just clicking this little edit volume button here. And I don't need to be precise, I just need to make sure that this guy covers all of the area that I want to be able to navigate in. You can use multiple nav volumes rather than just having one that covers your entire level, but I will be talking about that in a later video. For now, we're just going to have the one. All right, so now that that's set up, let's get the other fields of here configured. The first thing you'll see here is blocking layers. This is which collision layers are going to be considered impassable within this volume. So in this case, it's set to default, and that's fine because all of these cubes are in the default layer. However, if I had something in another layer, say I had a cube in the water layer or something, and I don't want to be able to navigate through water, then I would just want to go in here and check water here. So just set this to all the layers that will block your character's navigation. Static only, I'm also going to leave as true because all of these objects are static. Generally, you're going to want this to be the case. HyperNav currently does not support runtime volume generation, so you're going to be best off having all of your objects be static. However, if for whatever reason you don't want them to be static, then you can just turn this off. Next, we have the max agent radius. So this is basically the size of the agent. Um, this is saying that for a single, like a part, a point in this volume to be considered open, it has to be able to accommodate an agent of this radius. In this case, it's up to one, but looking at the agent, I have a sphere collider on him that has a radius of 1.5. So I'm going to go ahead and copy that 1.5 into my max agent radius. Next, for the voxel size, you can think of this as the precision level of your volume. A lower voxel size is going to make the volume much more precise, but it is also going to take way longer to bake, so there's kind of a balance you have to find there. Generally, I found that a value of 1 works pretty well, so I'm going to be using that in this case, but you might have to play around with that and find the right value that works for you. For the rest of these, I'm not going to mess with them for now, but you can look up in the documentation what these additional properties do. Okay, so with all the parameters set up here, I'm going to go ahead and bake. This is going to take a little while. It's going to basically take all this collision info in this region and generate the data for this volume. And you can see it finished, didn't take that long, and here is our volume. It is made up of a bunch of different regions, which are all convex polyhedra, and these are going to be kind of the nodes that agents use for navigating. Alright, this, that is all that we need for our volume.
The next thing we need is a pathfinder. So we're going to infrahazard create hypernav pathfinder. This thing, we don't have to change anything. It is all good to go with these default settings. You can, again, look in the documentation to see what these do, but these default settings should work for you in most cases. You may want to take this nav pathfinder and put it in a different scene. Um, depending on how you want it to work, you could have one pathfinder per level, or you could have a shared one that is persisted across all of your levels. That's up to you. I'm just going to leave it here because I only have one scene. Now finally, we need to get the agent set up so that it will actually use pathfinding. First thing I'm going to add is a nav agent. This is similar to a nav mesh agent in that it's, we're going to give it a destination and it's going to find a path and tell us how to get there. However, in order to actually make it do anything with that path, we need to add our own script. In this case, I've created a script called agent controller. Um, I will open the script in a second, but just know that it is completely blank for now. There is nothing set up in that yet. Let's go ahead and edit the script. So again, completely blank. And there are some very simple steps we can do here to get basic navigation working. So I'm going to start by adding a reference to the nav agent, as well as a transform to use as our destination and the speed that we are able to move at. Next, let's add an update function and just say agent.destination equals target.position. Then let's get the um, desired velocity from the agent. So desired velocity will be basically if the agent has a path, the direction it currently wants to move in. Then um, normally you would probably apply this velocity to a rigid body or use it with some acceleration or something a little bit fancier than what I'm going to do here, which is just move the transform directly. But this should get the idea of acro across of how to do this. All right, so we're updating our transform.position. And I also want to rotate the agent to face in that direction. So I'm just going to say if vel.square magnitude is greater than 0 0.01, then transform.rotation equals quaternion. Look rotation vel vector3.up. So this will just make the agent rotate to face the direction that it's moving. And this tiny bit of code should be all that we need to get this agent up and running. So let's assign the agent. Let's give it a speed of 5. And I need to create an object to serve as that target. That's fine for now. We will put this target in here. And let's go ahead and play the game. This thing should be navigating now. So I'm just going to stay in my scene view. And if I move this target around, you can see that it is, in fact, finding a path to the target and following that path. Great. So yeah, with just that simple script, it seems that everything is working and we can navigate properly in 3D. Um, of course, you'll probably want to, again, do something a little bit more um, interesting than what I did with the velocity and probably add some acceleration, but this shows you the basic concepts. Now, you might think that this path looks a little jagged and that the movement could be a lot smoother. We will address that in the next video where I talk about the spline navigation system. Until then, goodbye.